Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to learn how to deploy our Anidon instance on a digital ocean droplet. So let's get started. The first thing you will need is an account on DigitalOcean. If you don't have an account, use the link in the description below to get some free DigitalOcean credits to get started. The next thing we'll need is a domain. I am using Google Domains but you can use any other domain provider of your choice. The first thing we want to do is create a droplet on DigitalOcean. I am using Ubuntu 20.04. The shared CPU is basic. And then and I switched to the regular Intel with SSD for CPU options. And then based on where you are uh, located at, select the data center. And now this is an important part. I am going to use SSH keys and that is my preference. But if you want, you can go ahead and select password as well. Now, if you are not sure how to add SSH keys to your digital ocean, I've added the link to the guide that you can follow to add your SSH keys. I'm going to give it a name and it in video. And I'm going to go ahead and create a droplet. So now this is going to create a droplet for this. Alright, so our droplet is up and running. So before jumping into the deployment step, let us first configure our DNS. So to configure your DNS, copy your public IP address and go to your domain provider. And in the DNS settings, we will configure the A records. We are going to call this N10 and this is, will be an A record and paste in the IP over here and click on save. Now when you configure your DNS records, it may take from 24 to 48 hours. So even though your deployment was successful, you may not see your N8 and instance up and running instantly. So I would suggest you to wait for at least 48 hours if you are facing any kind of problem with this. Now that we have our DNS configured, and now we have a droplet running. Let's go ahead and start with the whole deployment process. As mentioned earlier, I have set up SSH keys so that I can connect to my server through my local machine. So I'm just gonna SSH into my server. Now we have access to our servers. So let's go ahead and start with the process. To get started, the first thing we'll do is we will update all the packages that we have in our Ubuntu server. Once this is done, we will be installing a few packages. So over here, I have pasted the command that you can see on the screen and I'm gonna hit enter. This will download all the packages for us. Now there are a few commands that we are gonna use throughout this video now. You can find all these commands on the Anitin documentation. Now that we have the packages installed, we are gonna grab the docker image. Now before installing docker, I'm gonna again run the apt command and then I'm gonna run the upgrade command as well. Alright, so now our packages are all updated and upgraded. So let's go ahead and install docker. We are going to use the command sudo apt install docker c and we are going to pass the flag hyphen y.
To check if a uh, docker was installed successfully, you can run the command docker hyphen version and this will give you all the list of commands as well as the docker version that you are using. Alright, so now that we have knocked out docker, the next step is to install docker compose. Now you might be wondering what is docker and what is docker compose. This is out of the scope of this video and I'm not gonna go into details of that. But if you are really interested to know about docker and docker compose, let me know and I'll be happy to create a separate video on that. With the first command, we downloaded the docker compose repository and then the second command gave a user the access to this docker compose repository. So now to check if docker compose was successfully installed, you can run the command docker compose hyphen v and over here you can see we got the docker compose version. We now have docker compose installed on our server. So the next step is to create the docker compose file. In this file we are gonna set some configurations. So let's take a look. I am you using Vim over here but you can use any other editor that you want. Now I just pasted all this information from the uh, documentation. So let's take a look what is happening over here. The first container that we are using is of traffic. Traffic allows all the incoming requests route properly to any tent. So we are setting up a bunch of default values over here. You don't have to make any changes over here. Everything over here is good. The next is we are using the Anitense Docker image. Over here again you can see that we have various labels for traffic. And over here you can see the rule is host. And then we are passing a variable subdomain dot domain name. We are gonna set these values in a few minutes. The next is we want to secure an Anitan instance and that is why we have auth activated to true. And we also are gonna use a username and a password to log into our Anitan instance. So now I'm gonna quickly save this. And the next step is to create an environment variable file where we will be configuring all our environment variables that we have set in a docker compose now again over here i am gonna paste some default values from the anytime's uh, documentation the first thing we want to change is our domain name our domain name is called tilpod.app and the subdomain is anytime that's what we configured in our dns the next is the auth username so you are going to use this whenever you log in into any 10. So I'm going to call it Herschel and the password over here can be Herschel underscore any 10. Now make sure that you have set the username and the password and you remember this because without this you won't be able to log into your any 10 instance. The next is the time zone. So this is really important if you want to use a cron node for example so based on the time zone that you are setting over here your cron node will get triggered and then lastly is an email address for your SSL so I'm gonna go with a generic one that I always use and that's it these are all the environment variables that we need to set for our editor instance and I'm gonna save this Alright, so the last step before starting a docker compose is to create the root directory. So let's do mkdir which is a make directory command root and it ends slash. So this is now this has now created a root directory for us and this is where all our data will be saved. Alright, so now we have everything configured so let's go ahead and start our docker container. Now 
Now you can see over here it is gathering the traffic image and once that is done it will download the uh, edit an image awesome so let's go to our browser and try to access an attend as i mentioned it might take some time for the ssl certificate and the dns to get configured that's completely fine you can either try reloading it or you can try accessing it after some time and over here we have a brand new anytime instance running to give it a spin let's try out a small workflow we'll get some articles from hacker news if i execute the node we'll see 100 items will be returned by the node and we can see that 100 items got returned by the node and it is up and running on your own servers i would love to know how you use anytime drop a comment let me know how you are using anytime or you can always tweet to me at hershel1712